This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. The Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. We are joined right now by retired FBI Special Agent Jennifer Coffendaffer as we talk about Dennis Rader, the BTK killer, and new evidence that has been literally unearthed against him in Park City, Kansas, where he once resided i know that lot i've driven by that lot you were from there you know i spent a good chunk of my young adult life in that city and it's a a very bizarre little empty lot in the middle of that neighborhood i remember when they tore the house down initially and i'm actually kind of surprised that there was anything to be dug up in that yard why why was that yard not excavated you know almost 20 years ago when he was arrested and probably about 15 years ago when they tore the house down it's it is surprising. I I think that a lot of people in law enforcement don't really understand at times unless you have it happen to you the ingenuity at which people will hide things. Mm-hmm. You know, the pouring of concrete, you know, we talked about how we encapsulated everything, how low, you know, below the ground it was. Yeah. And and that's why I liked when they spent you know, 10, 11 days at Rex Hureman's house. I I would like to think they left no stone unturned, but, you know, you wonder, I didn't see them jack, jackhammering up any concrete, but maybe it just was old and, and it didn't look like it had been freshly poured. Sure. But uh, I mean, the the oddest thing I ever saw a place where they kept evidence was they put the evidence in plastic bags in the rain gutters up on a house we were at and I was interviewing the subject and, and finally he, you know, confessed. Yeah. And he told me and I, I said, guys, get out the ladders. Mm-hmm. We're going up on the roof. Everything was right there in the rain gutters, well kept in plastic. So, you know, most investigators never look in rain gutters. After that day, for the next 10 years <laughs> of my career, rain gutters. we always looked in the rain gutters. We never found anything, yeah. but we always looked. Just the ingenuity of that one individual that thought this is a great idea. And it turned out it, it was until they actually confessed. Where does this go from here? Are, are, is this something we're just speculating, obviously? Dennis has, has never admitted to any other crimes. And he seems, we think most of us thought that maybe he did confess to all of them already. And because and, he's been commenting other, on other cases in the last year quite frequently, I thought was interesting. And I know he loves the attention. Media has always been his thing. Did he? Do you think he he knew that at some point these other ones were going to come back up and it was going to be a new media storm on him and he was just waiting for that day? Well, I think it's, it's a possibility. I mean, there there's a couple of, of interesting notes, though. One is the young lady in Missouri, certainly, those details are that she was raped. And that completely does not fit the M.O. of Dennis Rader. Sure. He did not rape his victims. He he definitely, you know, there was semen and ejaculation involved, but after death and, and things of that nature. So it just doesn't fit the M.O. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's going to end up happening on the Missouri, but they're saying that he is their prime suspect. On the young woman in Oklahoma, I think that is a much more viable candidate because he did apparently work installing alarms at the bank across from the laundromat at the same time we have the laundromat entry. So at least it puts him in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so I just think where you start getting off the MO, it, it doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense that he would have changed his MO with Mm -hmm. that particular victim. So I think for me, my, I'm still waiting to really hear everything come out. The other thing could be, remember at that time when he confessed, you know, there was no death penalty in Kansas, but there was a death penalty in Oklahoma and one in Missouri. So if he were involved in those, he did not want to die. It would have behooved him, you know, not to confess why wouldn't he be confessing now when supposedly there's some sort of immunity deal yeah. on the table? Uh, it's still, you know, that's why I said my jury is still out 
until they unequivocally prove it. But I don't know if they can with them, you know, slinging pantyhose around their desk. Where's that DNA? This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers Podcast, dropping soon. Press subscribe now.